Upon the foundation of innovative thinkers and inventors like Tesla and Moray, the modern age of free energy research began. In the 1950s, as waves of flying saucer sightings occurred throughout the United States and while an infant space program was trying to catch up with the Russians' launch of Sputnik, a man named T. Townsend Brown was busy on experiments that defied conventional understanding about electricity, gravitation, and propulsion. Along with doctors Paul Byfield and Agnew Bonson, Brown took high voltage to the next extreme. In this rare home movie, the earliest experiments in electrogravitics are recorded. By using high voltages over 20,000 and up to 200,000 volts, Brown discovered that highly charged capacitors would exhibit a noticeable thrust in one direction. Although awarded a patent for his electrokinetic generator, no one has ever reproduced his experiment until recently. Larry Davenport shown here demonstrating his replication of Brown's electrokinetic apparatus, explains. But when I first began to read Brown's stuff, I didn't quite understand the difference between the ion wind devices, which there's a lot of them out there, and some of them are, are very efficient as far as producing ion wind, and his particular apparatus. I finally decided to do Brown's work in, in uh, 1994, I looked at his device, I'd, I'd tried several different things and they hadn't worked, and I thought, well, Brown is supposed to be the pioneer of this, or so the people that make the claims and that uh, get the patents, they always refer to his name, so I thought, I'll go back and I'll try to do this. Getting it balanced was real important. His uh, method of propulsion specifically was using the charge separation, high voltage charge separation on a vehicle. He found that uh, circular craft were better for that application than uh, wing craft. However, um, recently we found through uh, Dr. Paula Violet's research that the B-2 bomber actually seems to qualify as an electrogravitic craft. Uh, the military has admitted that it uh, electrically charges the forward leading edge of the wings. Uh, there's also a very high dielectric being used. Depleted uranium is used on the uh, forward edge of the wings. And whether or not there are other applications for that technology and that uh, design, we're recognizing that because the exhaust gas is also negatively ionized, that all of a sudden we have the high voltage charge separation that's necessary to provide an extra propulsive force, especially at high velocities. So electrogravity uh, in that um, aspect is a very simple process, but does provide a good amount of force for a very small amount of energy input. As with many other promising inventions developed during the Cold War years, the National Secrecy Act prevented scientists like T. Townsend Brown from commercializing or even publicizing any technology which could potentially be interpreted as having a military application. 